okay, the global atmospheric circulation. So the most important thing to remember are convection currents. So warm air rises. So when you heat air, the water vapor in it will rise. But eventually when it gets into the atmosphere and cools down and condenses, it will also sink. So for the whole of this video, what I want you to remember is that warm air rises, that's going to form clouds. And cold air sinks. And that's not going to form clouds. That will lead to sunny conditions. And we give these names. So where the air is rising, we call that low pressure. And where the air is descending and it's nice and sunny, we call that high pressure. So, at the equator, the sun's rays, insulation, are concentrated. So there's lots of sunlight hitting the equator. So we've got lots of warm air that is rising. Now we know that the warm air is going to rise and condense to form clouds. So at the equator, we get lots of rain because of that low pressure. And coincidentally, we also find tropical rainforest at the equator. So it's not a coincidence, it's because that warm air is being evaporated by the sunlight, which is very concentrated. We get low pressure and we get rainy conditions. But if that was true, then the equator would be hot all the time and the poles which receive, receive more spread out sunlight or um, less concentrated sunlight would be cold all the time. So the globe circulates, the atmosphere circulates that air, and that's where we get the name global atmospheric circulation. So this air is going to travel in the atmosphere and it's going to cool down and condense. When it cools down and condenses, it stops forming clouds and begins to sink. We call that high pressure. Now remember, where air is sinking, we're going to get sunny conditions. So somewhere that is just north of the equator, I'll pop the equator on here, that is very dry and sunny, because we don't have clouds forming high pressure, that's where you're going to get your desert. So tropical rainforest where there's low pressure, where we've got high pressure, sunny conditions, no rain, we're going to get deserts. And this cell, we call this cell the Hadley cell. That's just the name of that first cell near the equator. Now the same process happens again. So our air is going to be circulated by the earth, but eventually it's going to get warm and rise. So we're going to have low pressure again, where our air is rising. So we're going to have rainy conditions and our air is going to travel through the atmosphere in a convection current as well. And that's called the feral cell. Now, we need to think of a place that is quite far away from the equator, probably actually closer to the Arctic Circle. It's very wet and rainy. I can think of a place. So this is where we have the UK, or temperate, deciduous fire or forest. That's because the air is rising, so it's forming clouds. That's going to lead to a lot of rain, so we get the UK. Finally, the last cell is called the polar cell. Now the air is sinking, so remember that's going to lead to high pressure, no clouds when the air is sinking. So that's going to lead to sunny, but also very dry conditions. So it will be sunny in the summer, very dry. That biome is generally the tundra or the polar biome, where we get very little precipitation, less than 250 millimetres a year, but it's also quite sunny in the summer. The last part of the global atmospheric circulation has to do with the Coriolis effect or the spinning of the Earth. Now the equator is actually spinning faster than other parts of the Earth, or the Earth is spinning fastest at its equator. But we don't need to worry too much 
about that. All you need to know is that the Coriolis effect Capital to see because it's a name, influences the deflection of the wind, so it changes the direction of the wind. In the northern hemisphere, if the wind is travelling towards the equator, it'll move in that direction. We call those the trade winds. But if it's moving away from the equator, it'll travel in those directions, and we call those westerlies. And you'll notice when a tropical storm in the northern hemisphere starts to form, it goes around anti-clockwise. When it's going away from the equator, it's a westerly, and when it comes down back towards the equator, it's a trade wind. That's why uh, tropical storms move in a clockwise direction, sorry, an anti-clockwise direction north of the equator. However, if air is travelling towards the equator in the southern hemisphere, the trade winds will move in that direction. If it's travelling away from the equator in the southern hemisphere, your westerlies will move in that direction. And that's why anticyclones in the southern hemisphere travel in a clockwise direction.